Mandarin ducks are such a delight to paint. I will show you the exact steps and watercolor pigments that I recommend for this work and we'll talk about how to create sharp edges and gorgeous feather effects on this bird. Lots of different colors here and I will share the color mixes I created to simplify the palette and make it more cohesive without losing the vibrancy. And of course, the essential watercolor technique called negative painting comes into play when we paint around the small light details. Let's look at the materials. I'm using my typical combination, including cold pressed watercolor paper from Arches, synthetic mix brushes from Escoda called Kronos, and lots of different brands of watercolor. I saved all the different details below. As always, if you want to paint with me in real time, you can join me for two hours of slow brush strokes and detailed commentary on my Patreon channel. This duck is our August tutorial. You may have seen a glimpse of my initial watercolor study for this bird where I used lotus flowers and leaves. Thank you Joanna and everyone else who provided this recommendation. It works great. Although I'm not too happy with my values there, perhaps not enough contrast for the duck, but the leaves were so much fun to paint. And if you have any other ideas for what to put behind this reverse version of the duck, I will wait for your feedback. Let me know in the comments below. I might just go with another version of lotus leaves, keeping them a little bit lighter so the duck stands out more. And a special thank you to everyone who helped me with the right term for the bird's feet. They are called talons and I'm delighted every time you teach me something new. We all have our area of expertise and lately I'm even enjoying some great advice from some of you on video equipment. So all that is to say I love you all and appreciate your support and advice both on the art side of things and everything surrounding my videos. Thank you for your likes and shares and comments. This is the best way to help my channel grow and even though I take a while to respond sometimes I feel the love and will always try to read and respond to to everything. And with that, here's my outline. So let's get started on the Mandarin duck. Let's look at our pigments. One of the defining characteristics of this bird are these large pointy wings with soft golden color. I felt like burnt sienna and gold ochre would be the most natural combination here. Not too vibrant and you can add a splash of purple for shadows. Purple and orange are sort of on the opposite side of the color spectrum and will mix well. Add a splash of burnt orange if you think the colors are too dull, but it's completely optional. More golden ochre on the cheeks and again if it's too dull maybe add a splash of warm yellow. When you paint the background layer try to leave a few spots without any color. Those will become our light feathers and feather highlights. Again a splash of burnt orange up on top and let's switch to our blues and greens. I think a transparent thylo blue, red shade or green shade works beautifully here. Use the same blue on the eye. If you watched my tutorial on eye painting, you will recognize the technique. It works every time. Just make sure to leave a few highlights without any color. And we will follow up with indigo a little bit later. Indigo instead of black for all the dark details, dark indigo and light blue will mix very well and will work together perfectly. And you can start adding splashes of purple into the blue wet on wet for a nice shimmering effect around the edges. It will help add a sense of volume so the duck doesn't look too flat. After all, we're painting blocks of color and it's easy to lose track of the form and shadows, making them look a bit too flat. So play around with color. Your turquoise or emerald green will also come in handy. You can add it to the blue wet on wet and of course use it as a standalone for those green feathers. Here on the tail, the feathers are done using negative painting technique, just painting around the white strips, maybe adding some indigo to the shadow areas. I love this process so much. Just a few strokes and all of a sudden the tail looks real, no masking fluid or white 
paint is needed for pure watercolor work we really don't want to be using white pigment and so this is a much more optimal approach you'll need a smaller brush for this part finally the dark green feathers and i've tried everything especially in my first version including lots of different pigments from lots of different dot charts, I find that simply using sap green or olive green with a whole bunch of indigo is what works best. And you can vary the amount of green and blue to achieve subtle value variations. This is also the time when you can start experimenting with your mixes, adding all the other pigments, making your green and indigo mix a little bit warmer by adding the same burnt sienna from previous sections. You can add turquoise or emerald for different color variations. Just play around and see what works best. No need to introduce anything new at this point we can work with saddle variations in hue and play around with our mixes here and now let's come back to the top of the head and add a little bit of our blues and purples maybe even that turquoise Notice that the initial orange section is dry at this point, so we don't have to worry about the edges bleeding. We can simply work carefully with the tip of our brush and finish off the top of the head. I promise no extra colors, but for the beak we do need a bit of red. You can go as far as adding two reds, one cooler and one warmer, for example, quinacridone coral and quinacridone red for some variation but even just one red will work notice again how i'm painting around the white highlights using negative painting technique and by leaving those details i'm recreating some of those shapes that we see in the reference photo maybe add a splash of that same purple from the feathers up on top to add a little bit of a shadow. The chest has a lot of highlights and this is where using indigo instead of black will really help us because it's going to mix perfectly with our purple and we can just start with a large area of Dioxazine purple or whichever purple you're using and then finish off with indigo around the edges. Here you may want to switch to a smaller brush just to get some of those smaller details painting around the orange feathers on the neck. A sharp line of indigo at the bottom of this feather detail and we're getting very close to the end of the first layer. I wasn't happy with how sharp the feet looked in the original reference, so I searched a bunch of images and studied the feet. The talons we see are from the back, so it's important to get those shapes right to capture the perspective. Once I was happy with my drawing, I just covered everything with pigments that you will be familiar with by this point. Burnt sienna, maybe a few splashes of orange. And now the fun part, my favorite part, creating definition and details, some subtle texture on the feathers in our second layer. And I'm gonna make a new mixture using what I've used before, but we're gonna arrive at a different color altogether. So I'm gonna take burnt sienna, mix it with indigo. We have a nice brown color, and I'm gonna apply it wet on dry on the back of the bird, and then do that large area on the wing and notice how I'm positioning my brush strokes over the surface that I've covered with clear water, just going around in semicircles, mimicking the direction of feathers. So we have these beautiful feather cascades, very subtle wet and wet effect, only possible with watercolors. I absolutely adore watercolors precisely for this, giving us an ability to create this kind of softness by using lots of of water and you can play around here again by adding a little bit of green into the mix if you want or just use that simple initial mixture of burnt sienna and indigo clean up the edges and let it dry let's move on to the next section i'm gonna switch to the smallest 
Kronos brush size one and we're going to focus on the tiniest shadow so everything around the eye using indigo the edges of the blue section of feathers on top of the bird's head another layer of red on top of the beak blending down into the lighter areas with clear water and the remaining section on top of the bird's head and chest and notice how small my brush strokes are you want to position them in the direction of the feathers so study the reference photo and see that they're almost horizontal so you can create a sense of volume by adding these tiny strokes in the shadow areas you don't need to blend them as long as they follow the natural direction of the bird feathers they will create nice texture and if you leave the center of the section without any additional color you will create a sort of a highlight effect and add a little bit of dimension to your painting suddenly this looks a lot more natural and real compared to the first layer where we simply covered everything with flat color At this point, you can make your indigo super saturated and work on all of those details that look practically black in the reference photo. If you know my style, you know I don't like using black straight from the tube. There are lots of other pigments that can help you achieve the same dark value without looking too harsh. And as I mentioned before, that indigo flows so nicely into the purples and blues. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I highly, highly recommend it instead of black. Or you can also use something like Payne's Gray, which will also look super dark, but not too harsh. And finally, if you have a really tiny brush, you can add a little bit of texture on that large area of the wing that we've covered with the mixture of burnt sienna and indigo. And you can see I'm using just the tip of my brush. My indigo is a lot lighter. You don't want those lines to be too harsh. So it doesn't look like sort of like a zebra. It's much more subtle and thin and I'm just lightly covering the area, eventually switching back to that original mixture of indigo and burnt sienna for a more subtle look. The lines are softly disappearing into the large cloud of indigo and burnt sienna that we've created wet on wet just a few minutes ago. I think you will find that the most difficult part of the mandarin duck is the neck feathers. It would have been super easy to paint these lighter hair strands using orange and white on top of the brown color. With watercolors, however, we can't layer lighter colors on top of the dark ones. So this is where negative painting technique comes to the rescue or masking fluid, of course, but that technique can get really messy and more and more I find myself relying on tiny brushes and negative painting to create definition around lighter objects with watercolor. So with my new super macro lens, I'm excited to show you up close so you can see the exact strokes. I'm simply painting around my pencil markings with darker quinacridone burned orange, sometimes even adding purple into my orange 
Remember how I mentioned that purple and orange mix well for shadows? So that's it. That's the texture. No mess. Even if you get a couple of feather highlights this way, just by painting around them, it's already more realistic and so much nicer compared to just a flat look without any highlights. Now we can move on to more simple lines, the details that are easy to paint with darker color on top of our first layer. So let's just go over the bird and add those large feather details. You can see that I'm mixing different proportions of my blue, green and indigo, sometimes burnt sienna to get different shades within the same palette. I will also add a little bit of a burnt orange to the wing for some extra contrast. And now let's move on to the tail, where once again negative painting technique saves the day. All I need to do is paint the shadows just like that, using lots and lots of indigo primarily, painting around the larger feathers, and even capturing some tiny feather strands. All of a sudden the tail looks like it has some dimension, and we can now do the remaining accents to bring the overall look of our watercolor mandarin duck to the next level. So in the final step I always go back to the eye area and all the details around the face because the more sharp contrast we have there the better. So adding another layer of indigo on the eye is good, very selectively keeping the highlights white and maybe another layer of purple and orange on the neck to add extra dimension so that it looks like the feathers fold and there are different levels of shadows there. A few more glazes to boost the vibrancy on certain feathers, maybe some subtle shadows under and over the wing, and our duck is ready. Thank you for watching and painting with me. Do subscribe if you like colorful bird and flower tutorials, and I will see you next week. <music>